Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we're going to be looking at power on hardware, namely links and switches. This has been a debate that has been in the robot community for ages now and recently Robert Cohen did a really, really good video on the breakdown of links and switches. He also did a really funny video where he was Brobit that was like a whole other thing. I'll leave links to both of those in the description but you should definitely check out his links versus Switches video. I agree with most of what he says in that video. Uh, however, I think that we can kind of simplify a lot of the stuff that he was talking about into some design principles. And I also feel like there was a little bit that he left out on the link side of thing that we can also roll into some design principles so that we can make links and switches better and safer for everyone in the robot robot combat community. I've got some idea of a semblance of what these kind of design guidelines will be, but most of this video is going to be me suggesting those and then wanting you guys to jump into the comments and add your own suggestions. Uh, I don't think I have the right set yet, but I want to start a conversation on how we design the robot power on systems that we use because they are quite critical, obviously. They are all about making sure that the person operating the robot is safe, but also making sure that that robot stays alive in the arena for as long as possible. It is, of course, a very devastating thing to lose a fight by having your power on hardware fail on you in the middle of, an, of a fight. So, as I said, I think Robert Cohen got a lot of what he talked about right. He was right about links. Uh, they are easy to build. In fact, you can take hardware that you already have, you can slap it into some wiring, you can slap a loop on the other side of that wiring and call it a day. So much so that you can forget to design the system. You can forget to design it into the hardware that you're building. And personally, I've fallen for this trap three different featherweights in a row. One of which is uh, very, very obvious here. The first couple of fights I had with this, uh, I used a link in the system and I put no thought into it. So the link ended up kind of zip tied in place in a bit of a wiring mess loom in the middle of the robot. And I don't think that's the right way to do a link, especially when I run it up against these design principles I have. So let's run through the design principles and then we can talk about how a link or how a really simple link kind of doesn't do well against those principles, how switches uh, kind of force you into a lot of those principles, and then how I've done systems that I believe is better than both of those. Uh, these I don't think are the be all and end all of powering stuff on. I Like I said, I don't think I am done everything right. I think these are just steps in the right direction that we can still improve on as a community. So let's get started. So like I said, I, there are two main criteria here, keeping the Roboteer safe, Roboteer safe, and also uh, keeping the robot powered on. So I've got two design rules for each of those. The first two are gonna be about safety. The second two are going to be about keeping the robot powered on. And I'm gonna sneak in a fifth one that's really only for bigger robots running kind of anything above 4S. Have the link or the switch in such a position that it's fixed in place, it's a known quantity on the robot, it's somewhere that you can instantly get to and activate the robot and you know there's no guesswork involved, as well as doing it in such a way that there is minimal touching of a turned on robot. Because this is a safety thing, right? You don't want to be near a robot, any robot, when it is powered on. Uh, fail safes and stuff exist, obviously, but the less you can be in contact with a turned on and active robot, the better it is for you. So this is a kind of negative on the link side and a positive on the switch side, right? The link, the bad style link that I was talking about where it's zip tied into the robot, 
that's not a known quantity. It can kind of float around a little bit inside the robot, so you're not ever 100% sure exactly where it is. And often when it's zip tied in place, as I have found myself, uh, you have to grab it with both hands, one side on the actual male and one side on the female to get them to go together properly. That means your hands are quite in close around the robot uh, and you are near and touching something that is going live. That's not to say switches don't have the same problem, but switches kind of force you into a decent design mentality. Because they are a rigid thing, they're going to be a known position on the robot, and because they have to be activated by a tool, it does limit the touching of the robot. However, if somebody does something stupid and puts their switch down inside a wheel well so that it's not gonna get hit and have to force a screwdriver inside a wheel well, the natural inclination will be to pick the robot up and jam a tool into it and do that. So th these design guides can help with whatever hardware you're running. Next up is a bit of a paranoia one on my end. It is a way of seeing if the power system is turned off at any given time. Now, a lot of you might jump into the comments to say, but there's LEDs and there's all sorts of stuff, like power LEDs are a mandatory thing, and that is totally true. But LEDs are a fragile quantity in a combat robot. It is easy to break a power light. And on the flip side of that too, both of these robots right now don't have batteries in them. And it's nice being able to know at this point that I can jam a battery into both of these and I will know that they will stay off. Uh, so I understand and I fully ex like expect and know that this is a paranoia part on my part, but as a safety thing, knowing that both of these robots are turned off at a glance while they're turned off and while there's no batteries in them is a very nice thing to have as a safety step. Now, this is where links have an amazing upper hand here because if you have the link in your hand, the robot is turned off and that is a known quantity. You can know that really quickly and quite easily. Switches can be like this, but not always. Uh, the Wyarchi switches are a great example of this. The Wyarchi switches, you can turn them off, but you don't want to turn them fully off to the point that the screwdriver stops moving because it can break components inside them, which means that it's not a quick thing to know if a Wyarchi switch is off if it's just sitting cold on the bench or with no battery in it or whatever. Uh, there are ways to fix this by having screws that back fully out or back to a point where they stop because that way you can throw a screwdriver in really quickly, give it a quick turn and know whether the robot is on or off even if the lighting system isn't working for whatever reason. Next we move on into the keeping the robot powered up and keeping the robot active during a fight. Now fights are an energetic, chaotic place. So, like I said, there are two rules for this, and the first one of those is shock mounting. Now, links zip tied into a robot are shock mounted. That's a thing, that is why, other than, uh, you know, not really thinking too much about it, but that is why I never really tried to like glue these to a frame or anything. Having them zip tied and flop around inside the frame is great, it shock mounts, everything. Of course, it does go against the safety rules, so that's, you know, one of those things. Uh, it takes a bit of thought on these and you have to decide whether you want to be safe or you want to win, which is never a good position to put yourself into. Um, switches, on the other hand, kind of build this in a lot of the time. A lot of the switches that are out there are in softer plastic casings and kind of reward you for mounting them in a way that they're gonna shake and vibrate around a little bit. Like the Wyarchi switches, again, they're a great example. They are in a HDP or Delrin or UHMW molded case. They are softer than everything that's around them inside a combat robot, which means that as a combat robot gets hit, that Delrin and stuff is going to shake and it's gonna vibrate and it's gonna deform plastically and it's not going to take as much load on the internals as everything else around is taking. So once again, it's one of those points where the switches kind of force your hand in design here. Uh, number four is to keep the mass of the actual power-up device to a 
bare minimum, as small as you can possibly get it. The lower the mass on your actual piece of copper that is connecting your circuits together, the less amount of force is going to be on it when it gets hit violently to the side because of a big hit on the combat robot. This is where links like this are a really bad idea. This has got a massive loop of wire on the back of it. It is a heavy link on its own. Uh, and of course, also the loop can just get pulled by anything at any time. Uh, so there are ways around this as well, but then this is again where the switches have forced your hand in design. By buying the switch, you have a small copper plate with small silver contacts inside. All of that stuff is tiny and it uh, just doesn't have the mass to be thrown around, especially considering the uh, mounting hardware that is being used to keep that in place isn't gonna let go on the amount of force that is gonna be on a tiny little bar of copper. Whereas the plugs can let go on the amount of force that is on a big loop of wire. The big robot rule, which is have a pre-charged circuit. Have a pre-charged circuit if you're doing anything over about 4S uh, or anything you need a VESC for, anything you have a big ESC for, have a pre-charged circuit. Switches, links, either way, doesn't matter, put a pre-charged circuit in because either of them is going to flash as you turn them on with anything over 4S and that means that you're getting pitting and you're possibly going to get welding on your contacts either way around. So a pre-charged circuit is a great safety feature to have on a robot that is getting those big flashes when you power it up. So how do we use those rules to build a better link and also build a better switch? Well, I'll have a look at the two examples that I have on the desk right now. So first I have very, very obvious here with its custom screw switch that I built for it. Now, uh, as I run quickly through the list, you will see that it has a lot of the advantages that screws always have. It is a screw switch, so it can be activated from a screwdriver that is a long way away from the robot. It uh, does actually have a benefit over other screw switches. This switch uses a very, very short screw. So I can tell that when it's sitting out this far, that the whole thing is completely unwound, which means that this robot is never going to power up because that screw is just not in the right place for that to be powered up. So that is, that's the one advantage that I would say of this over a, um, a conventional bought screw switch is that I can see that aspect. Then of course it is rigidly mounted to the frame, which is rule one. Uh, rule three, it is actually attached to a piece of HDPE in under here. There's a black piece of HDPE under there. So the whole thing will flex and float as it gets hit, which is really good. And of course it's a switch. So it has a small contact copper plate inside, which means it's going to get less abused by forces that are put on it uh, when the robot is flying around in big hits. And then we have Annie, are you okay with a link system? Now, once again, this is a rigidly mounted link system so that it is a fixed location on the robot, uh, but it will, it does actually have some flex, which we'll get to when we get to the later rules. Uh, so it is a rigidly mounted thing. It sits exactly in a spot. It does not float around inside the robot. It's easy to get access to. Uh, you can activate the robot with one hand. Uh, and actually I can do this with a pair of plies as well, but I'll just do it with by hand here. So I can force Annie's weapon bar into any object, especially an arena wall, and I can power her up with one hand being very clear of the robot and I don't have to touch Annie from the point that this last link piece goes in just like that. Now, of course, uh, point number two, it's a link system, so it's very, very obvious uh, when the link is not in the robot and therefore Annie is definitely unpowered. Point number three, flexible mounting. So Annie's top plate is a flexible, very thin piece of HDPE. So that helps a lot, but then also the block that the uh, link is sitting in here is flexible PLA, uh, sorry, TPU is this one. So we've got TPU up here. So there's two lots of flex 
in this system, which means that any big hit is not going to be felt as highly by the link itself. Now, finally, the link itself. The link itself is the bare minimum that I could get away with for a link. It is literally two bullet connectors and a very short loop of wire. Compare that to a full actual XT60. Uh, it is considerably better. Additionally, the choice of bullet connectors matters here. Personally, I use these type, which have a uh, kind of spring load on the side of them, which are better, I find, than the end sprung type that you'll often find inside XT connectors of any kind. The spring loaded on the side means that the forces on this are from both edges and it's a lot easier or a lot, a lot less easy to deform than one that is uh, spring loaded on the end. These can deform over use and therefore get loose and therefore come out a lot easier. So these spring sided ones just have more force required on them to pull them back out again, which is of course a good thing when you're trying to keep your robot powered on. So like I said, I don't think these are perfect by any means, but I think they are a start. They're a start towards having some kind of design ideology that means that whether you're using switches or whether you're using links, you're going to be as safe as you possibly can be. And you're also going to have a system that's not just going to fail on you mid fight. Uh, so I, I don't want these to be the be all and end all. I want you guys out there to jump into the comments, have discussions about what you think of the rules or the guidelines that I've said add any other ones that you like, change stuff up if you think it needs to be changed up. Um, but let's just, let's move the conversation forwards rather than a links versus switches debate. Let's have it as a, what we need to be doing to do our power on systems well. Because regardless of whether you use switches or you use links, we all want the same thing out of our power on hardware. So. If we're running to the same guidelines, to the same principles, it shouldn't matter which way around uh, we build our combat robots. So yeah, jump into the comments and discuss it. Let me know what you think of what I've put forwards here. Let me know if there's anything you want to change, whatever. Um, yeah, and hope you guys have enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video.